So suppose XD is a metric space. We'll now characterize uh, sequential compactness, which we uh, by proving the converse of what we did last time. Okay, so theorem. And let me remind you, sequential compactness is equivalent to compactness. So we are also characterizing compactness. So the theorem is that suppose uh, X is complete. First of all, we need it to be complete. And for all epsilon greater than zero, X has a finite epsilon net then we know that X is uh, sequentially compact. I said sequentially compact because that's the form in which we'll prove it. But remember, we note that actually this hypothesis proves separability like we did last time, meaning the union of the epsilon nets, appropriate epsilon nets will prove separability. But in any case, we proved sequentially compact implies compact. Okay, if you went through that proof, you would take epsilon nets, prove sequentially compact, use that to construct epsilon nets. So just a comment that the hypothesis directly proves sec separability, hence second countability. So sequentially compact implies uh, compact. So let's see the main thing. The idea is the following. So let's take, let's first take the setting and then we'll, I'll mention the idea. So let Xn be a sequence in X. And what we have to do is we construct a convergent subsequence. And let's look at the idea with a picture. So suppose here is X, I mean a schematic picture. And let's take an epsilon net. We have a whole bunch of points scattered. Some of them may be close to each other, some far. But the main thing is every point is close to one of them at least. And now let's take a sequence. That sequence wanders around here, there, etc. But every point in the sequence is close to something in some one of the points in the epsilon net. Okay, and the epsilon net is finite. It means that there's a subsequence, all of whose elements are close to the same pink eye. Okay, there are uh, uh, infinitely many of these points uh, in the sequence, and only finitely many. Uh, points in the epsilon net. So there is some subsequence which is entirely close to one of these elements. Which one? It doesn't matter, but one of them. So two such points by triangle inequality are close to each other. So we can pass to a subsequence so that if this is an epsilon net, anything between uh, two points in this subsequence are at most two epsilon apart. This looks like we are heading towards making things Cauchy except epsilon was fixed. So the way around it is to go to finer and finer scales, take subses successive subsequences and use a diagonal argument, which is what we will execute here. So this is the main sort of picture. Uh, the geometric idea is this. Then we use the uh, standard ideas of di analysis, which is to use uh, as, as a diagonal subsequences. So we construct subsequences x n 1 x n 2 etc in fact with x n k plus 1 being a subsequence of x n k so they're all successive subsequences of each other Namely, let's first construct x1, okay? Take epsilon equals half first and consider the epsilon net, e half, okay? So now as e half is finite, consider the finite epsilon net. We are not requiring that every epsilon net is finite. Indeed, it's not because you could just add all the points in epsilon. So consider the finite epsilon net uh, e half. Rather, by hypothesis, there is a finite epsilon net e half. As e half is finite, uh, so let me just say 
first of all for all n in n there exists some s in e half such that the distance between xn and e half and s is less than uh, half okay so as e half is finite there exists a subsequence x1 n uh, of xn such that so on for elements in this sequence for all n distance between x and 1 this sequence and uh, s or as e half is finite there exists s in one fixed s naught in e half and a subsequent such that this distance is less than half. So what we have noted here is that one s naught will have infinitely many close to it. Maybe all of them do, but at least one has to because the whole sequence is infinite. Okay, so we have this. Okay, now so next consider or rather inductively. Well, given x and k such that, well, with, with this property, each one is a successor, a subsequence of the previous one, and hence of all the back up to the first one as well. So, subsequence of a subsequence is a subsequence. So, given xn such that distance between x and k and uh, s0, ah, so sorry maybe it would have been worth it to before stating it inductively get rid of the s0 here okay so let's just get rid of the s0 what we get instead then is thus for all n m distance between x n 1 and x m 1 is less than 1 okay so inductively we construct subsequences x n k such that for all n m if I look at the kth subsequence x n k and x m k and any two it doesn't even have to be large enough for any one of them this is less than 1 over k so we construct subsequence and a subsequence of a subsequence and so on so that at the kth step we have these things okay so and how we do we do it construct using uh, 1 by 2k uh, uh, net that is where epsilon is 1 over 2k so once we have constructed the kth the k minus first satisfying this property to construct the kth we take a 1 over 2 by k net this is finite uh, so finite 1 over 2 by k net then uh, infinitely many have to be close to one of them and hence close to each other by the triangle inequality and so finally we, we see the diagonal subsequence What is the diagonal subsequence? X i i. Ith term of the ith term is Cauchy. Okay, and let me just point out the inequality as if i comma j is greater than or equal to n, then as, uh, then we know that x i i and x j j because we took subsequent subsequences of subsequences are elements of the nth subsequence of x n uh, k hence distance between x i i and x j j 
is less than 1 over n. So if i and j are both, uh, so this is the diagonal sequence, so if i and j are both greater than or equal to n, then this distance is less than 1 over n. Okay. So what have we shown? So, so this is a Cauchy sequence. So let me just use this space. So xii is Cauchy. So by completeness, xii is convergent. So this is Cauchy because given any epsilon, we simply pick a capital N so that 1 over N is less than epsilon. And then you see that if your elements in the subsequence are after N, their distance is less than epsilon. So we have, uh, we see this is a Cauchy sequence, the diagonal sequence, and ca completeness Cauchy sequences are convergent. Hence, given any sequence in X with the property that for all epsilon you have a finite epsilon net, we constructed a convergent subsequence. This proves sequential compactness and hence, as I said, compactness. So, so totally bounded and complete. And uh, I don't like saying totally bounded, though that's standard because really you want to think of it as finite at all scales and complete is equivalent to being compact and sequentially compact as well. And they are equivalent to each other for the case of metric spaces.